My, my name is David Ignatius. I'm a columnist for the Washington Post and co-moderator with Fareed Zakaria of a new website called Post Global, which I'd urge you to take a look at. We're here this morning to talk about the future of the Middle East in a very difficult time for this region. Iraq is suffering after four years of, of war and violence, is perched on what many uh, fear is, is the edge of civil war. Lebanon this, this week, uh, to read the headlines, uh, was nearing sectarian conflict of its own, uh, raising fears of, of, a, of a much wider conflict in Lebanon. Uh, the sectarian fault line uh, in the Middle East between Sunni and Shiite Muslims uh, is dangerous and worries everyone in the region. And looming beyond all that is the danger of a confrontation between the United States and, and Iran. One of our panelists, uh, Amra Musa, uh, said yesterday at a session that we had on Iraq that the war in Iraq had opened the gates of hell in the Middle East. If Iraqis can't help themselves, then no one can help them. So Iraqis should uh, get uh, to work together uh, to have uh, a real partnership between themselves, Shias, Sunnis, Kurds, and others, to perfection their system, their political system, which needs to, to be revised and to be more mature. Then, if Iraqis can really work in partnership and all communities are really present, none is marginalized, uh, majorities respecting minorities in all senses, political and communities, and minorities respecting the uh, rule of game uh, to tackle our history and our differences in a reconciliation sense and spirit, not with revenge or with hatred to try to put in place gradually the system that can work in Iraq, not something that had been dictated or imported. If those things are well defined by Iraqis themselves, how really to fight <coughs> terrorism, insurgency, militias, dead squads, how to work on parallel issues such as fairness on the security issue, then openness in the political issue. Together, this should be coupled one with the other. Once you start labeling people along their sectarian tendencies, there's a no-win situation in place. In Egypt, we believe that the first thing we need to do is to appeal to the nationalism within each country. Now, Iraqis, and I agree with the Vice President, have to do that. You can't help anybody if they can't help themselves. Iraqis, whether they're Sunnis, Shia, or Kurds, need to get together and say, listen, we know that our future is linked. We need to sort of be a little bit more generous in the way we uh, try to rule ourselves right now. We shouldn't, you know, put our own sectarian tendencies as the means for trying to find a political solution to our countries. We need to form real unity governments at this point in time. Forget about any, political, uh, any other political process. At this point in time, you need to have strong unity governments in Iraq, in Lebanon, in the Palestinian Authority, so that you can start facing the real challenges, which are really not even on the table today. I mean, we're too bugged into the processes to talk about the issues. And this is something that's very important. I must stress, inclusion is very important. And inclusion means that everybody that's at stake has to have an opinion in what's going on in their countries. Iraq has suffered a lot, although they are naturally rich and also, they have human power together. In fact, they could have been 
very rich, prosperous country, but because of the wrong leadership, because of the maximalist approach, now they have been suffering. So I'm sure that all of us, outside and inside, we should think that we should get lesson and we should never think to divide Iraq. I think the most important problem of the Middle East and Iraq that I would talk in, in later interventions is because of the intervention of other countries adding to these conflicts among the ethnic groups and sectarian violence is promoted by them and they think that with the pressure and power they are in a position to solve the problem in Iraq which is not true. You know extremism is getting expanded and uh, the, the, the reform Reformists and the ones who are in favor of peace, they are getting deserted and uh, they don't have any position anymore. We were wishing to have a stable Iraq. Of course, the, uh, uh, the overthrowing of Taliban and Saddam Hussein was really a good, great fortune for us. But the intervention by the foreign countries, even from the countries in the region, would add to the crisis, terrorism and violence in Iraq. And I am of the opinion that uh, uh, there are some powers that uh, they would like to promote uh, the conflicts and uh, the sectarian conflicts and clashes. It's in their favor to do so. That's why they are promoting it. And they do not want to see developments in the countries of the region. We have one destiny and we have to be together, hand in hand, without any intervention of anybody from other parties parts of the world. We were annoyed by Saddam, all of us, and we were pretty much upset for that dictatorship. We wanted to solve the problem of ourselves. In Afghanistan, we did it, and it was a bit successful, I can say. And of course, we, and but of course, we we worked with Bush administration in Afghanistan. But in return, as a reward, they called us the axis of evil, and uh, Kofi Annan accepted the idea, but. The the American administration said that, no, I would do it alone. They occupied Iraq, and the occupation of Iraq led to insecurity, terrorism, extremism in Iraq and the whole region and the globe. I, I think uh, I happen to look, I'm speaking as a Democrat also, and it is no secret through the last presidential race that I have deep abiding differences with this administration and its approach. I agree with Amr Musa that we have opened Pandora's box. I'm not sure if I call it gates of hell, but what we did was, and, and Prime Minister uh, Nassif said it would be good if we didn't think of this and define ourselves in the context of the sectarian, of Shia and Sunni and so forth. But the truth is we have to deal with the reality that's on the table. The fundamental differences between these sects and those interests are not being addressed. And I think, uh, Mr. Vice President, you would agree with me. What I hear is that both sides believe they can win. And as long as both sides believe they can win and the United States is providing a kind of security blanket against a full explosion, they are going to exploit that situation and that's what they're doing. And so the oil revenues issue has been on the table for three years. We're no clo it's not resolved. The fundamentals of the Constitution with respect to federalism are not resolved. And unless those issues can be compromised and resolved, I don't care how many troops are put in, Iraq is not going to be pacified. Now, we are partly responsible. Uh, the absence of legitimate, significant diplomacy is a disgrace. Quick flights in by a Secretary of State are not diplomacy. There should be a special envoy, maybe a joint bipartisan special envoy. Why not a President Clinton, together with a Republican of high ability, and bring them together and, and, and really work the process? Because I think you have to have a new security arrangement for the Middle East. I think you've got to reduce the American troop presence as fast as possible, because I think it's exacerbating the situation. And we have to address, obviously, the Middle East peace process. The important step that has been taken or planned that has been proposed is what President Bush has proposed uh, some time ago. 
And I agree with uh, President Khatami that the report, Baker-Hamilton report, is a fine document uh, that contained uh, many sound recommendations uh, that reflected the, that, that the authors of the report really understand the regional dimensions of the Iraqi, of the, of the situation in Iraq. Uh, well, the plan of Mr. Bush is aimed at finding an honorable exit for America from Iraq, which is something we should not really reject. If we can help, we should help. And in my opinion, we are all in a fix, not only America, but the Arab world, Iraq, the neighbors of Iraq, even Iran. And if some of us are not in a fix today, they will be in a fix tomorrow. So we'll have to be reasonable enough, wise enough, to settle the problem now. And this should be settled through talks, through dialogue. And this dialogue will have multiple effects. Dialogue that would benefit Iraq and move away from this confrontation that is really not only looming, it is happening between Shia and Sunnah, that is the most negative aspect that has resulted from what happened in 2003. These are the people who are going to make it happen. And I, I want to thank them, and I'd ask you to join me, not simply in, in thanking them for what they said to, this morning, but in encouraging them to go out into the world and make it happen.